Welcome to CJ Winner How To Video Series. Here at CJ Winner, we provide better tools, fast delivery, great service, and value. In this series of how to videos, we will be looking at the CJ Winner pneumatic attachment, uh, tear down, inspect, and repair. Uh, there'll be several areas that we were working on. The first will be pneumatic air cylinder uh, key components. The second will be the rope and fulcrum pins. Then the gear train, compensator assembly, and then the roll arms and brackets. The tools we will need to do the CJ Winter pneumatic attachment, tear down, inspect, and repair will be. You're going to need a uh, 9 16 and 7 16 socket, preferably deep well. Same size wrenches will be handy. A one inch wrench. Allen wrenches, a special screwdriver with a slot in it. I'll show you what that's for uh, later in the video. And retaining clip wrench. Also, you're going to need depp mics. You're going to need thread sealant. We use Loctite uh, 567. Fiber tight and mobile synthetic SHC uh, grease for the cylinders and o rings. Okay, to start the uh, disassembly to get to the power pack, we're going to take the uh, we're going to take this um, keyway off, remove the arms so we can get to the wedge and remove that. So and then the uh, cylinder will pull out from the uh, bracket. We're going to take the fulcrum pins out. Just push that pin out. Lower pin out. Take your arms. And just kind of pull one out. Let the springs get get tension, so you can turn it and then slide it right out of there. And you can leave those together for now. And then you want to take this uh, gear guard off just to get it out of your way. Also, it just slides out of there. Then what I do is uh, just take a little blast of air in this uh, port here, and it'll push the uh, wedge out. And you can access the pin pin screw, so you can knock that out. Take that out. Push the pin out. Wedge comes out. That frees everything up now. So when we disconnect these four bolts, we'll be able to pull that uh, right from the uh, bracket. Okay, now I'm gonna disconnect the four uh, locking bolts for the cylinder. Pull that out. These covers come out with a little uh, seal on there. So you don't get the- uh, Like rubber washers? Yep, so you don't get, uh, it protects the thread in the uh, bracket, so you don't get coolant or oil and chips in there. It's only on that, they're only on that one side. Now we should be able to pull the cylinder away from the bracket. You can see it ex the orange pop it off and it slides right apart. The thing I'm going to do is disconnect the cylinder shaft from this black nut here so I can inspect everything. You know, it's going to just come apart so I can check all the components. The piston's going to come off, everything's going to come apart then. So the key there is we'll be able to look at the uh, adjusting nut assembly as well. So just just 
get your getting device uh, clamp on these two ears here and you're going to use your uh, one inch wrench and you're going to want to this this is going to be tight so just loosen that up bring it around so now what happened was this adapter end comes off and then you need a piece of square brass stock that's going to go into that um, square hole that goes through the uh, cylinder shaft. Clamp on this. Yeah, sometimes it, it comes off at the nut in the back, some other times it comes off into the uh, wedge uh, assembly holder in the or yeah, wedge holder assembly in the front. So. Yeah, it's tight. <laughs> Unscrew that nut. And then you can see your uh, adjusting nut on here on your adjusting screw. And like when you're uh, making pitch adjustments, this is lo all locked together. And that what happens is that nut moves on that adjusting screw. And when this makes contact to the bottom of the nut, that's when you get your return actuation, that spring loaded, and it pops that seal and changes your direction. Okay, now that you've got this apart, you can uh, check the components for uh, wear. And just, all you need to do is push that, and you, you can separate the parts. And what you're gonna wanna look for in the cylinder is any you want to just wipe out the inside clean everything out and you're going to look for any scratching or uh, wear marks at the where the uh, piston o-ring wears out and it allows the piston to rub on the side of the cylinder and you'll see it you'll you'll see on one side like a uh, scraping and if that if that's the case, you're going to need to get a new uh, new cylinder because all you're going to do if you put a new O-ring in there, you're just going to wear your new O-ring out. Uh, it's too abrasive. So if you see any marring, any deep, you run your nail in there, and if you feel anything that's uh, a deep scratch, you're going to want to uh, get a new cylinder. And then the next thing I would look for is uh, wipe wipe this off. Also on the cylinder, you're gonna to wanna to look for dents. If, if this gets hit with a wrench or whatever and it gets dinged on the outside, you're gonna see that on the inside. Most likely it'll be like a, it'll look like a spider dent, like a, uh, looks, almost looks like it's uh, cracked uh, coating that's in there. And you'll feel like a dent in there and you're gonna to wanna to get rid of that cylinder because it's gonna just cause you nothing but problems. Uh, so the next thing we're going to look at is the piston itself. Make sure that the outside diameter is not uh, flat spotted or anything like that. Um, so if you see any deep scratches, same thing. Just run your nail on there. Because uh, you know, when this O-ring wears out, it, it rub the two uh, rub together and yeah, metal on metal. Yeah, it causes havoc. And then. Uh, you pop the, these apart, and then this is just a seal o-ring. Usually doesn't wear out, but we, if you're gonna do an o-ring kit, it's best just to replace them all. Um, so now on the uh, cylinder shaft, you're gonna wanna check the OD of this to make sure that it's not uh, scratched up and marred also, because that goes in, in and out of this o-ring or this uh, bushing here and there's an o-ring inside there that wears out and then again you have metal on metal and uh, causes a problem if you see a big wear spot on one side or, uh, of the cylinder shaft you're probably going to see the same thing on this bushing 
best thing to do is replace both of them because if you replace one and not the other, you're just going to get blow by and you're going to wear the new component out. So it's best to, if you're going to replace one, get the other one. And that just presses, the bushing here just presses out of the uh, bracket, press a new one in, you're good to go. Okay, the next step I'm going to do is take the adjusting screw out of the end plate. To do that, you have to break free this uh, nut that holds the uh, adjusting knob on. And that's a half inch nut. So you're going to break that free. And then you'll be able to unscrew the adjusting knob. And then the adjusting screw comes out of the end plate. And this is a face seal o-ring which seals on here and that's what changes your sense of signal to your four-way to change direction through this fitting here the black line so if you're having a lot of triggering issues where it's hit and miss or you may have a issue where this pilot is plugged because it's it's got like the tire valve type thing in there. If that gets dirty, it's not going to react uh, consistently, and you'll you'll see where you'll um, you might get a bad cycle every once in a while, or if it happens more than once in a while, then you definitely got a problem. Uh, and that's just a cheap. That's an easy fix. You can even grab one for, if you have another attachment, just to uh, just to. Uh, test it, you can grab one of those and throw it in there and, and see if your problem goes away. That's usually what I suggest when, uh, if somebody calls and is having that problem because the, the easy ones are easy to check and uh, eliminate bigger issues. Okay, so uh, these really don't because your movement is so small, there's really not a whole lot of wear you're gonna you're gonna see unless you crash. Um, then you're gonna you're gonna you know you may bend this screw the screw, and then you'll wear out the adjusting nut ears. You'll see where they uh, from sliding in and set in in and out of here. If that gets bent, you're gonna it's gonna wear one side or the other. And also, if you get too close to your uh, stroke limits, this nut coming up, making contact, is going to mushroom the bottom of your nut. And then when it, what happens then, is when this is going back and forth in, in the uh, piston, it hangs up. So you, you don't get a full cycle. You're going to break the thread rolls and everything else. It's not going to come back to where it, its full position of uh, reset. So if the back side of that adjusting nut is mushroomed out, we suggest replacing it. Yes. And if you have to replace that, you're going to, this has a spring pin in it. So this dimension from uh, the end of this flange to the bottom of the nut is very critical to your stroke lengths. You don't want to overstroke the attachment because you're gonna, it's just gonna, you're gonna cause all kinds of crazy problems. So um, the best thing to do if you have to do this is take your measurement from the bottom of that nut to the flange, write that down. And when you get your new components, uh, you're gonna to want to set that dimension and then bring your nut up to lock it in position so you can then drill it with a 16th drill for the uh, spring pin to go in and lock that, uh, that uh, stopping nut in position. And it has to be locked. It cannot be just put in there at some position because during cycle that thing's going to move around and if it comes off, 
you don't even you don't even want to know. So so another uh, component I already mentioned the the valve here. Another part of the cycle uh, process is the quick exhaust. In the quick exhaust is a um, flapper valve, and if that gets oil or chips or anything in there where it doesn't make it seal, you're going to get blow by and you're not going to get a good cycle. Um, the muffler, if you don't have this cone, most of them do. If you have an old attachment, you're gonna, it's, sometimes they're flat. Uh, those, the reason we went to the cone is because the flatter ones tend to get plugged up with uh, oil and chips and, uh, and it, it affects the way the attachment cycles in and out. If you don't have a good exhaust, you're not gonna get a quick uh, cycle. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the uh, bracket uh, inspection. And what, what I look for on the bracket is any kind of, like if this thing was crashed, you're gonna see where it hit the spindle. Um, and what, what can happen with that is you can collapse this uh, gap here, and then your arms are gonna hang up. And you, if, it, if that's happening, you're gonna see where on the inside, where the fulcrums are and where the arms move back and forth. Uh, if that gets, if that dimension gets collapsed, you're gonna have all kinds of problems with your arms hanging up. They're not gonna open up fully you're gonna end up ruining thread rolls. You'll see where on the bracket and on the... On the yeah, arms. and you'll see it on the arms too, like right here, uh, both sides. You'll see like where the plating is gone and big scratch marks, and stuff like that. Also, if it's been crashed, uh, this is a weaker point right here, this where the fulcrums come through. Uh, you just want to look there and make sure nothing's cracked and that the holes are not, uh, you know, getting egg-shaped or knocked out of round. Uh, that's one of the components there. And then you're going to want to check your gears. Make sure your gear teeth are, uh, are good. You know, like I said, if you crash, uh, if you stall out your thread rolls or anything like that, uh, the gear train takes a big hit. And you'll see where these get worn out or you'll get a flat spot from the gears shocking each other. So I usually check to make sure that they uh, still have good teeth on them. Check your, uh, your wear on the bushing. If you have any kind of slap up and down, exaggerated like this, you're gonna to wanna to change that bushing. And you'll also, if that's happening, you're gonna feel it um, in all directions. It's just gonna be worn out. And, and you don't want and, you know, too much play in and out this way when you, when you reset this up either. Uh, because your, your two uh, gears are fitting into this pocket on the roll arms. So it's critical that it doesn't slap back and forth. Now I'm going to check the compensator springs. By doing that you're going to need your uh, retainer. Take that clip off. Loosen up this screw here. Set it this way. Put your Cup your hand around so the springs don't come flying out at you. There's two springs in there that uh, are used for the uh, timing compensation. That way there, now that that's loose, your uh, internal gear will come out. And then there's a li two little uh, set screws here that hold the spring cup on to the external gear. And the, 
the first screw that goes in has a dog point. That dog point is going to go into that slot. And that's, that's how you uh, lock your spring retainer on. So you want to make sure that that screw is in that slot so that the retaining cup and the gear can't separate. That'll mess up your timing. Uh, so when you got all these, when you got the gears apart, you can check the OD of the external gear. If that's worn out, you're going to want to change the bushing and the gear. Make sure your internal gear slides through the external gear freely and spins. If there's any kind of damage to the to the uh, external gear, this won't go through. It's going to mess up your timing. It'll mess up your timing. Uh, so another thing is when you put this spring retainer on and you put the, de the screw into the detent, you don't want to over tighten it. When you're tightening, in, when you're tightening the dog point into the slot, you're going to want to keep moving your uh, internal gear to make sure that you're not putting too much pressure on that detent and locking the two gears together. You should go down all the way and then back it up a quarter turn? Yes. Yeah, you go down touch and then back it off. And then when you put the backer on, you also want to make sure that you're not putting too much pressure on. And that's, that, that's, uh, that internal gear is free because you won't be able to time your rolls. These have to be um, able to move freely of each other. Okay, now we're going to move on to the roll arms. And anything, the things you're going to look for on these, like I mentioned before, would be wear on the sides where uh, it's rubbing on the bracket. Uh, both sides. Uh, check your fulcrum holes to make sure they're not getting uh, worn out, egg shaped, just from constant wear. Uh, I'm going to take the gear guards off. When you take these uh, idler gear guards off, the idler gear is going to come right out. And then you can check the teeth on that for any wear. If you get a chip or anything in there, or have a bad crash, you might lose a couple of teeth and you're going to want to replace them. Uh, make sure your ID is still in pretty good shape. And uh, you can check the teeth on your roll gear. Make sure your teeth are good. Any chips or anything that might be in there, you can clean out at this time. Uh, check your ear tangs, make sure they're not getting damaged uh, just from old being old and a lot of wear. Uh, sometimes those tangs get worn out and you'll get a little bit of slop in your, uh, on your roll, roll gear or on your uh, thread rolls. Yeah, those tangs engage into the thread roll. To, yeah, it's what spins everything, keeps everything in time. Um, and at this time, you can just check quick. Uh, this gap right here on your roll pin, that's typically where the thread rolls ride. If you see any galling, scratches, or anything like that, you're gonna wanna get rid of those pins because uh, you're just, your rolls aren't gonna spin. They'll uh, gall up. They'll gall up, might heat up and seize right on there. Uh, so you wanna, if you've got any kind of wear on those, your best just get, uh, get rid of them. So the carbide roll pins. Yeah, you want the polish too. You don't want to, you know, uh, some people try to go after, I think you can put any kind of pin in there. It's got to be carbide and it has to be high polish. Reduces friction. And when you're thread rolling, you get a lot of friction. And to get that uh, carbide pin out of there, you only have to loosen the lock screw as long as 
the pin has not been removed and put in uh, improperly. There's a flat on the pin. The reason for that flat is when you're changing your rolls, this screw right here should not have to be moved. That's set and that holds your pin in line. Those set screws come um, pre-plugged uh, with um, uh, a sealant yep. that shows you those are the taper adjust screws and those should not be adjusted or moved unless you're trying to change taper yes. uh, for this style of roller. But if you're just running the same roll, um, you shouldn't have to adjust that. So when you, I'll show you the flat on this. So just undo this lock nut or lock screw and that pin will come right out of there. There's the flat. So when you put it back together, you throw your rock, your, uh, your new arm on or your new thread roll in there. Make sure that flat is lined up with this um, set screw down here. And it'll slide right back in there. And then you just lock your your nut down, and everything should stay uh, stay lined up. Uh, you can uh, sometimes people put them in backwards, and they loosen this nut up. And if this uh, flat here is on the bottom, you can't just slide the pin out. I've, I've seen them come back where the, the end of the pins broke off where somebody just uh, you know, took a hammer and a punch and pushed that out of there and it snaps the end off. Well, if, you, if you're messing around with a broken uh, roll pin, you're asking for trouble. So just, if, it, if, it's, if it's broken, damaged anywhere, get a new one. Save yourself a bunch of headaches. Uh, the arms, if these become loose, the locking screw becomes loose during cycle. At any time, somebody didn't tighten it down or just from vibration uh, where it wasn't tightened down uh, good enough at the beginning and it backs out a little bit. This with all the thread rolling pressure, this hole is gonna get oblonged. You'll see where, you're gonna see, you know, it's gonna be all, it's not gonna, your pin's not gonna fit in there nice and smooth. You're gonna to need to get a new new arm. That's a, that's a big wear spot. Oh, you're gonna to wanna to check the inside, usually away from the, where the gear is. Over time, from all your thread rolling and pressures and chips, these uh, faces here will get uh, sometimes worn. And then you'll get a lot of side pressure on your slop from your uh, thread roll in there. So just check your arms, make sure they're not worn out. Uh, I've seen them before cracked in here where somebody's, you, if you have a bad crash, that, that'll that'll uh, crack in here. You might even get a crack uh, up in this area. So just look the arms over, and make sure you don't have any excessive wear or cracks anywhere. Because uh, when it starts to roll and all the pressure is, um, is, the force is coming in, if there's any cracks, it's just gonna, it's a weak spot and you're not gonna, you're gonna be fighting your pitch diameters. Okay, now I'm gonna look at all my O-rings and replace the ones that need, well, if I replace one, I usually replace them all. I don't mess around with replacing one here and one there. It's just, uh, it's not worth the aggravation of taking the attachment apart um, and then putting in a, what I thought was a good O-ring and find out later that it's not that it's not good. So I usually take all my O-rings off everything, put them out, get this one out of here, just 
Just take a little Allen wrench or something to pop them all out. They usually come out pretty easy. Sometimes, if, uh, depending on what kind of cutting oil you use, over time the O-rings expand, get really big. We switched the lights on uh, yeah. a while back and uh, the performance has been much better, but sometimes uh, depending on the chemical makeup of the coolant, uh, it could affect it with the, it swells. Yeah, you'll see uh, if it does swell, especially this one with the piston, where it's moving up and down a lot, it'll be twisted up. Um, you'll see a lot of black sludge or whatever in, in the uh, cylinder. Um, yeah, it's just not good for not good for consistent cycling. Uh, you go through and inspect the O-rings? So I go through, clean all my O-rings, look for, make sure that, uh, you know, uh, especially the piston O-ring gets flat spotted, twisted, get rid of it. Uh, the smaller one that goes up through the, for the, uh, in the bracket for the cylinder shaft again gets a lot of movement in and out in and out that's going to get flat spotted on the inside if it's flat spotted on the inside or gets a twist in it get rid of it these the, the one on the end plate basically is a seal just replace it um, if you're going to do any kind of o-ring replacement replace that one because you don't want any take the chance on any leaks air leaks also that you know you get a little bit of blow by or something like that this is, this is the same way it, it goes in it's just a, it's a seal o-ring uh, so uh, when you're when you're under roll pressure you don't want any leaks so my my thought on the whole thing on the process if i if i'm take, taking the time to take the attachment apart i'm just going to replace all my o-rings and it's a cheaper maintenance thing too. If you're running uh, an attachment for quite a while on a machine and you got to take it off for any kind of maintenance or anything like that, just take the time and, and do the O-rings. And the O-ring kit for a 125 would be a 125? 125, 801. It gives you all the O-rings that you need. 125, 801. Yes. Uh, this section where we're going to go through and reassemble the entire uh, 125 SA attachment. Okay, um, how I start out is I'll take my, start on my end plate. Put my adjusting screw in. Make sure everything's clean. Put your knob on there. Bottom that out. Take the screwdriver and tighten that up. Locking nut. Hold the knob in your hand. Because you're going to want to make sure all this is tightened down. Lock it all up. Check your, make sure you got your spring action. Everything turns. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set this aside for right now. I'm going to take my uh, cylinder shaft, put the O-ring on that. Just put a little bit of grease on there, coat it with the grease. It's going to go in that bottom groove. Snap that in there. Make sure it doesn't turn. Yeah, make sure it's not twisted. You don't want it twisted on there. Uh, I'll put the, there's an O-ring that goes on underneath the thread here in this groove. I'm gonna put a little grease on that. Same thing, you don't want it to twist going over the thread. So you just start it out down there with the, hold it in place, stretch it out over, good to go. And you can start that in there put it in hand tight for right now. As 
set that one aside for right now. And you should field your ring going into the yes. shaft in your last uh, turn, turn and a half. Yep. Uh, okay, we're going to take, take an O-ring and uh, put on the piston. Cool the grease. Slip that into the groove. And you're going to put this uh, on that. It's going to lock down over that O-ring. Make sure it snaps in there. Make sure the O-ring didn't squirt out on you anywhere. Okay, I'm going to take the... Put an O-ring on the end plate. On that groove. While your hands are all greasy, just take a little bit of grease and put it on the ears of the adjusting nut. Make sure that's coated up with uh, some grease. And then the last two are going to go into the end plate. And then what I do is I uh, coat the inside of the cylinder wall with uh, a light film of uh, grease. We always use grease on the inside of the uh, thread rolling attachment. You don't want to put oil in there. Oil, what happens over time, creates a hydraulic stop and you will cause yourself nothing but problems. So we always use grease on the inside of the cylinders, not oil. Now what I'm going to do is place the cylinder shaft onto the end plate. Screw it onto that locking nut there. Just hand tight for right now, it's fine. Stand that up. Slide your greased cylinder over the piston. Lock all that down. Make sure your O-rings didn't squirt out anywhere. Like to wipe off all the extra grease. Set that aside. Put a little bit of grease on the um, cylinder shaft on the OD because that's going to slide in and out of the bushing that's on the bracket. So we want to make sure that that's looped up. I know what we want to do is check our spring plungers for the wedge at this point. And uh, the spring plunger, this, this helps um, the wedge stay balanced. And if there's any kind of uh, one arm hits uh, harder than the other, this is going to send the wedge back to, um, to center. So all that all it consists of is a little spring, a uh, plunger, and a uh, hollowed out set screw. It's got a hole in the center so the plunger goes through. So you put your put your um, spring in, put a little bit of vibratite on that thread so that it doesn't uh, kind of helps hold it in. Uh, with all the vibrations. Let's put a little dab on there. Put that together. Put that little hole there. And you take your special slotted screw screwdriver, and that's going to fit. It's going to allow the plunger to come up through as you tighten down. So you're really not compressing the spring. And as you tighten that down, you're going to want to set the height of the plunger from the top of the ear to the top of the plunger. And that dimension is going to be 360 thousandths. You want to make sure they're both set to the same, uh, same dimension. And then when you put your wedge in, it's going to be, it's going to be straight. 
just not I got that in there. And at this point, I'm going to tighten all these components up. I'm going to put it back in the vise, clamp on here, and tighten this nut here. And that's going to tighten everything up. It's take your one inch wrench, just throw it on there, and tighten that baby down. You can put some force on there. You want to make sure it's not going to vibrate loose. Put your uh, cylinder over the o-ring. Make sure it doesn't squirt out anywhere. And I always try to line the, the tang up so that uh, when I when I put this in and lock everything down, it's going to be in the position for my wedge where my wedge wants to be. You don't want it the other way because then you got to fight it, fight with it to turn it around so you can get your wedge in the right position. So try to do be proactive and get it in the right position. You, if you think about it, your uh, the hole is going to be in line with the holes for your uh, air fittings. You just press that down. Make sure it's sealed over the O-ring. Check. Make sure your O-ring didn't squirt out anywhere. Right. Now we're going to put the locking screws in, cylinder screws. Put your little O-rings on over the threads. Put your screw spacer in there. Drop your screw down in. Start it by hand. Just go here around cylinder until you get all four of these ones in. And just bring them down till they uh till you touch. Don't tighten anything down yet. Okay so now I'm gonna tighten these uh four uh, cylinder screws and you're going to want to use the crisscross theory on these when you tighten. You tighten one, cross over, tighten, tighten. It just keeps everything equal. It's like when you're putting a tire back on your car. Yep. And now we're going to put the air fittings on the back. Start with the, I'm going to start with the elbow. Put a little thread locker on there. These are all tapered pipe threads. So you're going to tighten this you're going to leave it at that angle. The reason for that is we have to get this on. And once it starts getting locked on, they interfere with each other. So you have to point the opening away from the other hole. It gives you enough clearance to uh, assemble the other part. Make sure your threads are coated with the coolant or the sealant. Thread that in there by hand. Screw it in by hand. Bring this around so that the port is sticking out the back. You always want it to point out this way. in there and just bring it back to the make sure it's always facing that way. 
Okay, now I'm gonna put the wedge back in. And to do that, you're gonna make sure that you have full stroke so that the cylinder shaft comes all the way out to give you enough clearance to put the uh, wedge back in. Can you turn that uh, pitch minus side? Uh, yes, minus. So that'll put that stop nut all the way to that uh, nut in the front of the shaft to give you maximum stroke. Give a little blast of air through there. It pushes the cylinder shaft out so you have clear access. Take your wedge, set it in there. Everything's pre, you know, our, we set our plungers so that everything should uh, should line up. And when you, uh, you just want to make sure you're flat on the wedge pin, lines up with the set screw hole. So figure out where your set screw hole is. Put your wedge pin in. Get your locking screw. Lock that down. Take your finger and just push that wedge back down in there. Bring this back to the plus side. About 10, 10 or so turns, so you're away from max. Now I can start putting the uh, top of the bracket together with the arms, the compensator, and that, is, that goes together. And I stand, usually stand it up, take my uh, compensator gears through the hole, make sure everything's free, spin nice. Spring retainer, put your uh, detent up, kind of line up your hole on your uh, spring retainer. Take your dog point screw first. Screw that down into the detent. Loosen it up a little bit. Just give it a little check. Make sure you're in the detent where you're supposed to be. Lock that down. Back it off a little bit. Put the locking screw in. And as you tighten that down, just make sure you can turn that internal gear. You want to make sure everything's tighten that down. Make sure that internal gear spins free. Make sure your external gear spins free. It's not locked up. Not too loose. Here. Not too loose. Back and forth. It's good. Good fit right there. Okay. Then take your attachment and lay it down. You're going to put your two compensator springs in. Be cautious with this. You're going to want glasses on because sometimes these springs come flying out at you. Start it in. I always try to keep one side up a little bit. Up down there so it don't come flying out. Now you got to get this pin. It's got to go between these two springs. That's why I raised one up. Slide that over the gear. Rotate the pin over to the spring that you have lifted up a little bit, and give it a twist while you're while you're holding the gear, and then push down, and you'll you'll fall between those two, uh, two springs. The pen has a little bit of taper on it. Um, when you get to the bigger attachments, they have a, 
because the pin is bigger, they were able to put a wedge on it so it makes it a little easier to slice between the two springs. But for this one, it's just a taper. And, but when you have enough to, as long as you raise that spring up and give it a twist, you'll fall right between those. If you don't get it between the two springs, then you won't get good uh, timing action. Now you're going to want to put your uh, retaining clip back on. I do that before I tighten the other screw down. There's a groove on there, you just slip it in there and snap it into place. Stand it up again. Tighten your lock screw down. Make sure that you uh, have it tight. You can just hold the uh, external gear with your hand and give it a little twist and you'll feel the other um, the internal gear should move uh, while you're holding the external gear. Then you know you have the right spring action and your timing's going to work fine. Set that aside for a second. Now you start putting your uh, roll arms together with the gear train. Uh, you first put your idler gears in and want the gear face is going to go against this edge over here on one arm doesn't matter which one but they have to be opposing each other so that when you assemble it into the bracket one of your idler gears is going to hit uh, the extra one's going to hit the internal one's going to hit the external and that's going to um, set your compensator mechanism compensator mechanism and make sure your timing is good otherwise if you're on you have not going on the same gear you're not going anywhere nope. so you can see how i have i have them opposed at this point put your gear guards on them over and assemble your uh, roll gear. Put your carbide pin in. Start it. Remember, put the big flat goes against the uh, inside screw there, the side screw, the small one. Take your gear and your roll gear washer. Slide that into place. Slide it across. Lock down the lock screw. Put your gear guard on. And just make sure your uh, your gear turns turns free. Sometimes these get uh, these brass covers and might get whacked or whatever. You can just tweak them out a little, you know, grab them like this and a little tweak if you need to uh, give it more clearance but you don't want to go too wild so that you get um, chips inside there uh, put your compensator gear guard on just a little tab slot on the bracket that slides into and you have a screw that's going to hold that in place. Knock that down. Take your arms, slide them in. Bring one over to the outside, outside the bracket, line it up. And then you can fit it into the slot, bring it up into position, slide this one, then this one, pull the spring, spring tension out so you can line that one up the same way. Slide it up.
put your fulcrum pin in. Always, always lay it down. Make sure you can see the uh, that the gears are lined up. Otherwise, you're trying to fight because that uh, idler gear floats around in there a bit. Black screw in there. Tighten that down. Lock those down. Put your key back in for the uh, adapter plate. key is reversible. You can put it on either side depending on how you're uh, using the attachment or what position you're using the attachment at. That's it. She's back together. Make sure everything turns free. You want your gear train to be nice and smooth, which it is, and make sure everything turns. Please visit us at www.cjwinner.com for additional information.